Good morning, good morning children, good morning everyone watching, family, teachers, siblings, who is watching, thank you so much for joining us for another week of children's online service. So glad that you could join us. I hope you're excited. I hope you're ready to learn more about Jesus. I hope you've all had a good week and you're all well. Yeah, so now we'll get into a time of praise and worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father, for that special time of praise and worship. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather once again to be able to learn more about you, to be able to grow in our faith, to be encouraged and to be strengthened. As the song says, we are trading all our sorrows, all our shame, and we are laying them down for you we thank you that we are so blessed that we exchange every single negative thing in our lives and we lay them down at your feet you are there to comfort us you are there to strengthen us and you absolutely love us and we want to say thank you Lord. thank you for our family our friends and everyone that you've placed in our lives thank you for the things that you bless us with every single day we pray as we are gathered for this service we pray that it will go smoothly, that we should learn a lot, that we should not be distracted, but we will be able to come out at the end of the lesson knowing more, being more confident in our faith, being more bold in our faith, being encouraged and wanting to gather and meet with one another more as well. We thank you, Father, that you've heard us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It's offering time.
So now it's time for this week's lesson. This is the church and this is the steeple. Open the... Wait, wait, wait. This is not the church. This is the church. Yeah, did you know that the Bible says that the church is actually not a building? The church is actually people. It's all the people who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. In fact, when the church got started, they didn't even have a building. The story of the early church is recorded in the book of Acts. Let's see what the people did in the early church. It says, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to fellowship, and to sharing meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over all of them. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. All of this while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Now, there's a lot in that passage, but notice what the early church did. It says the first Christians gathered together regularly to hear people teach about Jesus. We do that. They spent time together as friends. We do that. They shared meals and they prayed together. They helped each other. They were generous towards one another and they worshiped God together. We do that. And it says God continued to save people who put their faith in Jesus, causing the church to grow. Even though what we read from our Bibles happened a long time ago, the same things happen at church today. We don't have to go to church. We get to go to church. A lot of neat stuff happens there. We get to spend time with our friends. We get to share meals and pray together and help each other and be generous toward one another. We get to worship God together. And most importantly, we get to learn more about Jesus so that we can share that with others. And then the Bible says the church will continue to grow because more and more people are hearing about Jesus. Church is awesome. Take a minute now and talk about these questions with a grown-up. Amazing. So church isn't just actually a building with four walls that we go to. Church is a bit more than that. Church is actually the family of believers. So we are the church. Just as the church met together and shared and lived life with one another, we are called to do the same thing today in church or as a church in today's time. We saw that the church began on the first day of Pentecost with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit being received by the thousands of people. The church back then served as a model for church what it should look like now. The church came from a mix of different people. When a person becomes a Christian, they become a part of the church. Being part of the church means you follow the church leader, which is Jesus. Being part of the church also means you are part of a new family. The other people in the church, we should regard them as our brothers and sisters, and we should extend that same love that Jesus showed us to one another. In this week's new memory verse and it's taken from the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 42 and it's from the New Living Translation and it reads all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals including the Lord's Supper and to prayer 
He saw this verse a little bit earlier on and it reminds us that just as the early church were devoted, which means they committed all their time to one another and to hearing Jesus' teachings, they were also committed to meeting with one another, to sharing not only meals but sharing in everything that they had and they were committed to praying with one another as well. And we are called to do so as the church and the body of Christ. Check out this really cool video about the church. And now, a special report from Hunt Burkleton. Church, a sometimes pointy building where you go to sing songs. But is there more to this church than just the building? The answer is yes. But I'm not talking about a gooey chocolate center. I'm talking about the church's people. I'm investigative reporter Hunt Burkleton, and this is Hunt Burkleton Knows What's Really Going On with Church. I'm here at Mooseberry Academy, school for the very, very, very gifted students. I'm convinced they can help me with my investigation of people who make up the church, but I'm not convinced they can. No comment. I've nothing to say about church to a reporter. The only thing I know about church people is they can breathe fire if they get mad. And they have extra toes on their left feet, so they're always walking in a kind of semicircle. Uh, Stephanie's very wrong. But that would be kind of cool. You can know church people because they talk to God and thank Him for stuff. Talk to God. But what do they do with the rest of their time? Play games? Perhaps church chess or Bible backgammon? Um, those aren't real games. Or whatever. But church chess should be a real game. Kablamo! Figure out a way to play it on a flaming unicycle on a tightrope and I'll play church chess too. The idea of a new game does sound interesting. But I can't help but feel like this investigation has taken a detour. The question at hand is, what else do the people at church do? Maybe this will help. The church is made up of Jesus' followers. Jesus taught and demonstrated how to take care of people in need. So one of the main things people as a church do is take care of others. And if you want to get a look at it firsthand, you should talk to Alex, because as a missionary, She's helping to meet people's needs in Mexico. The church is following Jesus' example all over the world. I'm here with my parents, helping people to get food and medicine that they need. And most importantly, we're teaching people about Jesus' love. When people in the church help meet other people's physical and spiritual needs, they are demonstrating Jesus' love. Demonstrating Jesus' love. A simple idea. More simple than a game of church chess, perhaps. But more powerful than a fire-breathing church person. There's more to this church thing. So tune in next time for part three of my hard-hitting investigation of the church. I'm Hunt Burkleton, and I know what's really going on with church. So now it's time for us to share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely 
goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.